Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Um, good afternoon from where? It is morning here in Nigeria. Okay, if you can all hear me, good morning to you all. And you are welcome to yet another session of the ComCare training. Um, previously, we discussed on the introduction, introductory aspect of ComCare. I pasted a link for you to go and watch the first and also second video we did on the introductory aspect. You know, it will not be possible for us to be going back to what we have uh, did before. Somebody is saying he can't see. Can you all see what I'm sharing? Okay. I'm coming. Are you having a network problem from the side? Yeah, can you see what I'm sharing now? No, I can't see. You are not sharing anything. Okay. Okay, I can see now. Okay. okay. So, can you all see what I'm sharing? Yes, we can see. It. Okay, good. So let's quickly go through the previous um, lesson on the fundamentals of ComCare. So when we say ComCare, I, I, I guess almost all of you are familiar with the app ComCare. ComCare is just um, uh, a kind of platform that um, allows uh, non-programmers to like create um, a kind of application on Android devices. And like I said, non-programmers, you don't have to be a programmer to be able to use ComCare, right? Anybody can, can create application with ComCare. So the coding aspect is being taken care of. You just need some few coding aspects which already there are um, syntax created if you if you have to use the coding so the first thing you have to do when trying when using comcare is to have um to sign up with uh comcare hq you all can go to google and look for comcare hq then you sign up if, can you hear me? Is somebody, somebody is trying to say something. Please, if you want to talk, you can kindly raise up your hand and say something. So you go to uh, Comcare HQ and sign up. Don't sign up as an enterprise. Just sign up as an individual. Then... If you do that, you are going to have an interface like my own. Uh, 
an interface like this is what you have. Okay. So, sorry, uh, I hope all of, uh, some of you or probably all might have signed up to Comcare HQ. Huh? Have you all signed up to Comcare HQ? Uh, no. No. Okay, that means... No, we haven't. Okay, that means you did not follow the previous video. Please, you can go to my YouTube channel and get that video. You, it's contained the details of, details of how you can sign up and also start up something with Compare. So, thank you for the YouTube. The link for the from the previous recordings or YouTube link. Okay. Yes, the channel link so that you can follow. Okay, good. Um, yeah, that will help. Okay, okay. So that means you have to you'll be added to the WhatsApp platform and I will paste the link there. Right? We have a WhatsApp platform for the training a, a group. So the link will be pasted there. So you all will be added to that uh, platform. Maybe after the lesson you drop your WhatsApp numbers and uh, Noah will add you up. Noah will take care of that. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. So this is the interface after you might have signed up. And the first thing you will do after signing up to come care is to create um you add a project. A particular project you want to do maybe on maternal health or front uh, frontline um, health workers, any project you want to do. So you add up, you add, you give the project name, you add it to come here. And to do that, you come to this, I hope you can see what I'm doing. The right hand side here and click this. These are my, pre, my projects already, which I've created, which I've done um, previously. So you can see add project here, right? Can you all see that? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. So you click on add project. You have, I don't need to add another project now, but maybe, okay, let's just run through it uh, quickly. So I will add another project. So you can see project name, you give the project name. Let's say repeat class. This is the first time we are repeating this. Okay, let's just say repeat. So I'll create the project. I want to run through this quickly so that we can do something new today. We don't have to be going back and front. So my project is now added. You can see it here, repeat in the drop down. Repeat, this is my project, right? So I'll come back, you come back to application, click on applications. So we'll start um, building our application. So now this is the application interface where you build your application. You give the application name instead of untitled application. I don't want it like that. I'll have a name for it. Okay, I'll call it my, my repeat class. good so and you can just give it a description you just write okay this is a repeat class from the previous class you can type in anything i don't want to do that i will leave it right so you come to this place this positive sign add i want to add i want to add a module now and after clicking the add we have two Items there, the survey, collect data once, and also case leads, track items over time. The survey here, as it implies, collect data once, means um, if you want to carry out a survey that doesn't need a follow-up. Are you getting it? A survey that you don't need to follow up maybe later. You just want to 
create um, an app for data collection just once. You want to use it for that, just that main purpose. For instance, like an undergraduate student that just needs to create um, an app for his um, project to work, just to collect that um, data for that purpose. He will not need it in the future. So you, you use um, so the collect data once. You create it under collect data once. But if it's um, a project that needs a follow-up, uh, you come to track items over time. You have a project that you need to be following up. So you create it under track items over time. So now for the purpose of this lesson, let's start with the survey collect data once. We click on that. Okay, now, if you observe here, you can see I have surveys and survey also. The survey here is, is the module, which is the main, um, what do you call it, folder that contains the form, right? The surveys here is the module, while the survey here is the form. You know, when you, in a practical instance where you have your folder, and you have forms in that folder. Just look at it in that aspect. You have a folder, and also you have a forms in that folder. You know in a folder you can have so many forms. You can have five, ten forms. So now this survey here, this survey here is like the folder itself. You can see it is already carrying the folder sign, and also the survey is the forms in the folder. So let, uh, I want to like I want to label each of them to avoid um, complicating the names since we have survey and surveys. But it's very important you label everything you are doing. So I want to give the, so instead of surveys, I don't want it to be surveys. I'll call this, okay. Uh, I'll call this repeat, uh, repeat class, sorry. My keyboard is sometimes giving me headache, as usual. I'll call it repeat class four. We have done one, two, three. This is the fourth repeat class. I can also give it a description if I want. But I want to leave it like this. So I'll go back to my form and also label the form. I'll give the form a name. I hope you are all following. Yes, we are. Okay. Yes, we are following. Okay. Sorry, my internet is a bit slow. It's not really coming up fast. So my, this is where you come to label uh, to name your form. I want to name this form. Um, what do I even call it? Okay, let me say class four. Class four. You can add a comment if you so wish. So, my application interface is now ready. I'm done with creating all the interface. Whatever is needed is here already. So, all I need to do... So, I want you to observe this, please, where I said the folder and also the forms. You can see I've created my folder as repeat class four and the form um, class four. And I have the add, um, I can equally add another form in the folder. Just like I told you, you can have so many forms in, a, in, in just one folder. So I'll go ahead and now start creating my, my um, questions. If you have your question here already, uh, I think we'll have, we we'll need to have one questionnaire we'll be following, but for the meantime, let me just take you through the question type. So now, to add your questions in your um, application, you come to add question. Click on it. In the drop down,
sorry you can see the uh, question types we have in comcare we have the text type the multi-choice number date group to the last one advanced let me go through them quickly the text question type here is when you want to when your question type is just in um, alphabetic form a b c d to z so you can you type it under you, you type such question type under text multi-choice is when you have well, under multi-choice you have the multi-choice itself and also checkbox for multi-choice is when you have you need to make just one selection in a question maybe your question has a, an option of yes or no so you, you need to just make one selection either yes or no so that is when you use multi-choice and for checkbox check is when you have uh, in a case where you have to make multiple selection right maybe you have colors you, you are asked to select your favorite color you have white red blue green so you can select maybe white and red so in that case you use checkbox in and number here is when your question type question type is in numeric form one two one two three so you use an integer an integer here is when your question type is in whole number you don't need a decimals for it you use that also and also for when your question type is in is in phone number or um, numeric id so you use um the phone number or numeric id when you want to have a question type to collect uh, people's phone number in your form you use that and the decimal as usual also you know when you your question type is in decimal form the date here when your question type is in date you use dates and when it is in time you use time and when it's both you use date and time we have the group here where you have to group your questions we have the repeat groups where you have repeated question maybe a question like okay how many children do you have the, um the respondent says okay five or three and you want to like ask us uh, get some details from each of the child maybe the first name date of birth and uh, other anything so for the first child you collect his for and um, first name is date of birth second child you collect his first name and date of birth third child you do that so you use the repeat group for that to repeat the questions um multiple times sorry i clicked it click it i clicked the repeat group so let's go back um and also the question list question is has um, um quite um uh, a kind of different functions you can have your quest if you want to have your question in on one page not you know the default um come, uh, come here question uh, uh, sorry grouping type in terms of question is just one page per question you only have one page per question but, but in, in a case wherever you want to group your question you have a kind of question you want to group in just one page so you use question leads and other function that has to do with question list question li uh, list when we dive deep into the class you see how we we'll go about that you have uh, another question type again multimedia that means when you have you want to have your question type in image audio capture video and signature you use this we have label we we'll definitely use label maybe today hidden value uh, hidden value is one is our basic topic for today is our main topic for today we'll go through it and then the advanced section also where you have to, you, are, you have to get the gps location the location of the respondent you get the coordinate also back, backward scan when it involves scanning a barcode of the respondent also password I'm just going through this quickly because as I told you this is the fourth class so now let's start something okay um let's say our first question is trying to get the name of the respondent okay I'll go to uh, question type and click on text I'll now say okay name all right name uh we have let me just go through quick uh, through all what we have here quickly the display type 
that is where you type your question type name the question id here is like the numbering of, of your question tagging the question with with an id i want to leave mine as name you can equally change it and the question id doesn't accept spacing when you try to space it will create um an underscore for you instead of spacing so it doesn't accept spacing so I, if a, a particular question is is a kind of an important question that you don't want the mobile user to skip it you click on require so in this case the number user can never skip that question if he tries doing that the app will bring him back and prompt him to this question telling him is an important question he cannot skip it and again, we have the display logic where you do some logic, you validate your question, um, uh, you validate a question. Also, display condition where you have, you want you want to a question to be displayed based on a particular condition. You use display condition. You have the multimedia and other items. So go through that uh, gradually. And again, in a case whereby if you are signing up um, for the first time on ComCare, the display logic will not show. You have to come here, click on this, and um, allow your display logic, um, media, and also advanced. If you want to use any of them, you can click uh, make them visible by clicking it, clicking on any one. Good. So let's say the I want to add. Um, Another question. Okay. Let me go back to this name. I want it to be in this form. I want to be in this form. Um, first name. Right? Sorry. God is giving me issues sometimes. Okay, first name. Then this will be what? The last name. Please don't mind my keyboard. I don't know if it's the keyboard or me. Okay. I'll make this question also required. Okay, the next question should be, let me see, first name, last name, I'll say, okay, date of birth. The question type should be in what form? In date now, All right? Let us see, okay, I want to see the date of birth. This is also a required question. Then the next question should be, um, maybe, let's say phone number. Then, what do we add again? Okay, let's say gender or sex. So, a gender should be what question type? A multi-choice, right? I'll say okay. Gender. I'll make it a required question also. So, you know we have a choice for gender, whether male or female so you come and you come here and add the choice okay for the first point choice i see male somebody's let me allow this person in sorry um, and the second is what female good um what other question let's say okay uh, are you married let's say okay are you married Question type should be the choice now is what? Yes. 
Yes or no? Let me see the question. The next question should be, are you pregnant? Are you pregnant? Okay. Question, yes. Yes or no? Good. So these are just a few steps while trying to pregnant. So these are just a few steps while trying to create um your questions. Okay. So let's see how we can validate some of the questions. This is just a revision of what we did before. So I'm just quickly rushing over it. Um, I want to show you how you can do question validation now. Okay, like we said for the date of birth, you know, there are cases whereby the mobile user might likely mistakenly uh, get the date of birth in future not in the past you know you cannot have a date of birth in the future it has to be in the past so in that case you can validate um, the question type date of birth here to make sure the question date of birth to make sure the the mobile user uh, will not make that mistake of having the date of birth in the uh, future instead of in the past so this is what you do okay I will now say okay. I will now tell the system to validate to make this question. Make sure this question and date of birth should be in the future instead of. Uh, sorry, it should be in the past instead of in the future. So I will tell it okay. Date of birth must be less than what today. Right? So, and you can see I dropped a question here on date of birth, but it's just showing a dot instead of date of birth. This is because I am working on, I'm val uh, trying to validate uh, the same question. I'm working on the same question. I did being, I'm working on a different question, validating a particular question on a different question. It will definitely show me the question here. Let what i'm trying to say is that okay what i'm working on here is what is date of birth so if i should if i want to use maybe the last name to validate it if i drop the last name here it will definitely show me the last name you can see it is showing what last name but since i'm working on the same question date of birth so if i should drag it and drop on itself it will just show me a dot instead of what date of birth I hope you get you, you are getting it. Okay, I will now I will now save this. So this is now uh, this is now validated. Okay. Okay. Must be less than. Good. So we are good to go. Sorry. Um, I'm trying to validate the question, right? Not display condition. Sorry, I I was working on display condition, and I was talking about validating. That was why it was giving me that error. So. This is what I was supposed to do. I'm validating this to make sure it is in the past, not in the future. Good. 
So this has been now validated. There is no way the, sorry, is equal to, make sure it is less than, I didn't change this, less than today. So in this case, the mobile user can never have the date of birth, can never have the date of birth in the uh, future, but rather in the past. If he tries to do that, the system will bring him back and pop up that question and show him you are having it in the future in, instead of in the past. So I want to validate my phone number now. Um, in Nigeria here, our default phone number is 11 digits, right? It is 11 digits. So I want to now validate this phone number so that the mobile user cannot mistakenly have it in either less than 11 digits or greater than 11 digits, right? So I'll go to validation condition. Hmm? But this time around, I'll have to type some, just a little um, syntax. So I will tell the system to make sure what we are having here should be less than string length. Hmm? Should be what? Equal to 11 digits. So by doing this, by this validation, the mobile, the phone number must be 11 digits. It can never be greater than or less than 11 digits. You get it. So I'll save this. I can only, I can equally have a default message in case where, where the mobile user mistakenly typed 11, uh, greater than 11 or less than 11. So I can just have this message, a pop-up message for him. Hello, hello Joshua. Hello, yes. Joshua. Can you go back to that uh, validation? You said? Question. I said, can you go back to that validation uh, formula? Okay, okay. String length. You can see string length of this question the dot you are seeing here, I did. I just, I just didn't want to drag um, the question and drop it again. So by adding a dot there, it is telling the system that I am working on same question. You get it. So it means string length of phone number should be equal to eleven digits. Right? Don't worry. If you want to get, uh, if you want to get all the syntax of Comcare. You can you have can you see this place where you have the go to common logic and calculations? If you click on it, it if you're on uh, online, it will take you to the Confluence page, and you have all the syntax there. So this question now has been validated. It has been validated, and this is the validation message I want the mobile user to see. If in case he have it in greater than or less than eleven digits, it will pop up. This message must be. 11 digits so now um equally okay let me have a validation message for date of birth too uh, Jaffa. yeah um if we use the same condition like you used on um was it on the date of birth to say it should be less than or equal to wouldn't it also work here if we said it should not be maybe it should be equal to 11 or not less than 11 digits, something like that. Would that condition still work? You said date of birth? Okay, okay, you want to use... Date of birth is somewhere you click okay. where it said less than or equal to e or greater than. Exactly, exactly. So you want it to be less than or equal to, right? It can yes. work, it can work. It will definitely work. Okay, uh -huh. thank you. Yes, if you want it to be less than or equal to, it will definitely work. Good, but I want mine to be um, equal to 11 digits. All right? Thank you. Uh -huh. So I want to have a, a my default uh, validation message for date of birth. My default validation message, I, I want it to be, it can only be, sorry only be 
in the past. So that is my validation message. If it if in case he, he mistakenly have the date of birth in the fu uh, future, it will pump up uh, pop up this message to tell him the date of birth can only be in the past. Good. So now um, another question now. I want to val um, have a display condition for this question on gender. Okay. If you look at the question on gender, the next question said, are you married? For this question, are you married can work for male and female, right? A male can be married. Likewise, a, male, a female um, respondent can be married. But are you pregnant? It implies to only who? To male. Uh, uh, sorry, female. A male um, respondent can never be pregnant. So I want a display condition to tell the system to only show this question if the respondent is female but if the respondent is male this question and are you married uh, sorry are you pregnant should not pop up all right okay this is how i'll go about it you go to the question and are you pregnant hmm? and come here come to this place display condition click on it Okay, I will now tell the system, okay, for this question, are you pregnant? Show this question only when the response to this question on gender is what? Is female. Are you all with me? I'm on this question and are you pregnant? But I'm now telling the system, only, only pop up this question. Only show this question when the response to this question on gender is what is female so i will save so now can you see it here this is the question on are you pregnant but the display condition is what only is what is gender uh, sorry is female only display this question when the response to this is what is female are you okay with that? Are you okay with? Yes. Okay. So let's quickly run through a few things we have. We have done. So I want to go ahead and save my my question. Huh? This is where you save. After creating everything, you come here and save. You can equally be creating each question and saving at the same time. But in my own case, in my own case, I want to, I prefer to save my question after I'm done with creating my form from the beginning to the end. So I will now save. But you can equally be saving while pre, uh, adding the question. If you had, add a question, you save. If you add a question, you save. So now, let's go to the app preview. This is what we call the app preview. Right? Did you see why I clicked when, when it pop up? You click on this side and you have the app preview. I will refresh and see. This will only show you. We are trying to see how... The, we are trying to see the view of our forms in when it is deployed to the uh, to the phone, right? When it is deployed in the phone, we want to see the preview. So this is how it is going to look like. We have the repeat class, as I told you, which is the what? The folder. That is the module in ComCare terms. And this is our form, class 4. Click on it. Okay, good. You can see what we have. The first thing we have is the first name. And equally, that is what we have in the form we created. So my first name is Jaffa. Then I go to the next question. My last name is Lawa. Uh, date of birth. Okay, let's look at the 
date of birth now. Okay, my date of birth now. Okay, let me have the date of birth in the future and you'll see what will happen. It's now in the future. So can you see? It is saying this is an error. That is, cannot, can only be in the past. My date of birth can only be in the past. You know, I customize my my validation message, right? But okay, let me change it to, uh, uh, sorry, I, I still want you to see something. So you see, I cannot move forward. This is not highlighted because there is an error. Is it my internet or Jaffa is breaking? Huh? Uh, yes, I think it's your internet. Yeah, uh, okay. it's your internet. Okay. Okay, let me improve on my internet. Okay, okay. So now, I want to have this date of birth in the past. Okay. So you see, it it has accepted, it has accepted it. Okay. We, so the next thing is my phone number zero seven zero three five three three four nine three three. You can see it has accepted because it is eleven digit. If I if I should delete one digit now, it is rejecting it, telling me must be eleven digits, right? Okay. Now it is eleven digits. If I make it twelve, it will also reject it. I, and you cannot move forward. That is the essence of the validation, right? Because if you don't validate, if in any case the mobile user makes a mistake, he will just you just have it like that. You get it. But once you validate it, there is no way he can move forward. The mobile user has to come back and correct it before he can move forward. So now this is corrected. So the next question, okay, on uh, gender. Okay, let me see. The gender is female. Just look at this. You know, we validated a question on are you pregnant, right? Okay, let's say it is female. Are you married? Yes. Then are you pregnant? Let's say yes. Okay, that is the last question. I can submit. But let me go back. Okay, let me select male now. Are you married? Are you the next question? Are you married? Yes. And you see the next the question on are you pregnant is not popping up, it's not coming up for the male respondent, right? Because it has been what we ha we had a condition for it, we had a display condition to only show um this question when the question on gender is what is female. That's why that's why you surprised to see a pregnant man in the future. <laughs> Not in Nigeria. <laughs> Not in Nigeria. <laughs> Good. So, um, so we are done with this. And equally, uh, and if you observe, we have all these questions on different pages, right? We have all these questions on different pages. And sometimes you you want to have your question in same page. Uh, to avoid the stress of flipping over so many pages. This is how you go about it. Okay, for, for me to have this question on same page, okay, let me collapse. Let me, uh, sorry. Let me collapse all this. Uh, if you want to have it on same page, you go to group list, uh, question list, sorry. Or bring it to the top and you add all your questions in this list okay let me call this list um maybe bio bio data so i'll have to add all these questions this is how we go about it you click on the question drag and drop did you see that it is now added you can see the question three here for the first name is different from which one is different from the last name because the first name is added to this question list, but the last name is not added. Okay, I will now add the last name too. I will drag it and drop it. You can see? You can see how it is changing. I will drag this and drop it too. You see? I will drag this and drop. Drag this and drop. Drag this and drop. Drag this also and drop. So, by doing this, I've added all my questions on same page so i will now save
okay let me allow somebody in maybe next time i'll have to appoint somebody to be doing this okay so my questions all my questions are now added on the same uh, page so let's view what we have done let's see a preview of it okay class four so can you now can you see my questions now all on one page instead of having it on what on different pages okay let's see let's just fill it and see how the validation works okay i said my first name is Dafar, and last name is Lawal. date of birth um if i have it in the future it will reject it you see okay but if i have it in the in the past oh, let me just allow somebody in. so if i have it in the past it will definitely accept it so the phone number two zero seven zero three five three three four nine three three if it's 11 digit it will definitely accept it but anything less than that it will reject it or greater it will reject because we have what we have validated our question so now look at this question now on are you um gender if it's female the next question on are you pregnant with pop up did you see it here but if it's male the question the question is gone right because the question is validated so that's all so this was what our, we did so far from the last um from the previous class so are we all here do we all understand before we went into the program the business of the day are you all are we all on the same page are we all here yes okay any question regarding this thank you Jafar. Can, can you repeat uh, sorry can you repeat the group creation part a little bit thanks okay how to group my questions sure yeah okay you go to the um add question here right as i said it is under question list you click on question list mm -hmm. if you click on question list then you add all your question to the question list as you can see okay let me just give you a simple instance all this question you have seen i have added all this question on the same page okay let me collapse all this if i want to add the next question okay let me see um let me have a question like uh let me see father's name father's name hmm? um let me have another question like uh okay okay do you feel do you feel sick uh, okay yes or no yes and secondly no Okay, in this case, uh, in this case, you can see I have added some question, but these two question now on father's name and do you feel sick are not part of this bio data, are not on the same page. So you can see, look at how the three, what we have here, sorry, is what we call the question three. From the question three here, if you look at this three coming this way, and this also branch is coming this way 
are not on the same line. Let me use that word line. This one's this one this one is coming this way. These two questions are quite different from what we have here. So that is because from this question first name to are you pregnant? I have added them on just one page while these two are on different pages. But these two are not on the same page, mind you. Father's name is on a different page, while do you feel sick is on a different page. Okay, let's see it on the app preview now. Okay. Okay, now, my first name, Jafar, last name, Lowell, date of birth, past, not future, um, phone number, 070-1455-6677, gender, male, are you pregnant? Yes. Good. So, you, you can see all these questions are on one page. But when I move to the next question, father's name is on a different page. It's not on the uh, first page, right? Okay, let me see father's name. My father's name is Laura. So, and the last question is, do you feel sick? Yes. So you see, they are both on different pages. Father's name and what, and do you feel sick? They are both on different pages. Okay, let me have them on the same page now. Father's name and do you feel sick on the same page. So my app now, um, I want my form to be, I want to have a, uh, what do you call, you call it, two pages for this um, form. So now, these two questions, I want to add the two questions on same page. Okay, uh, you go to question list, as I said, Qu uh, sorry, groups and click on question list. Okay, so now this question, I want to drag it to this. You drag it and drop it in this. So you can see it has been added to this group. Okay, let me call this, um, let me uh, call this question maybe, let's see, new page. Good. Then I'll save. So now, my question, okay, father's name, I'll still drop it here. So now, this question of father's name and you feel sick will now be on the same page, while the remaining question will, will be on the first page. So let's preview this. Okay, first name, I will say Jafar. Last name. Sorry, we cannot skip this question because we have made them to be required question, important question. If you try to skip it, otherwise, we'll just be skipping the question. So, in order for us to go to the next thing we want to view, but we have to fill them. We have clicked all as required. So, the next page now. So, you can see we have both questions now on what on the same page. Father's name, Lawal, and what? Do you feel sick? Yes. Good. So, so are you are you okay with this now? Hope I've answered your question. The person asking on Yes, thanks. Thanks. Okay. Yep. Good. So, let's forge ahead. Um. Okay, I want us to look at one very important aspect of um, application building. It is very, very important. The most, let me use this word, the most important aspect of um, application build, building, which is the hidden value, right? Um, and by the word hidden value, hidden value is a question, is a, a kind of special question type. Why? Because the it is not um 
visible for the uh, mobile user, right? It is only you, the application, uh, application builder, that will have uh, access to the hidden value. You are the only person that can be able to see. But for the, it's not meant for the, what do you call it, uh, mobile user to see. But you can just compose some, what do you call it, um, calculation under it. You can do so many things with um, hidden value. You can do uh, some calculation. You can share a value from another form. That is when you have a follow-up form. You can take a value from another form and share it on this uh, on a different form using hidden value. And also, you can account for something in the export. You know, export when you are trying to export your data from the back end. You want to see what your mobile users have collected so far from the field. So you can account for something from the back end from the export form using hidden value. All right? So now, um, from what we have here so far, let's use a hidden value for it. Okay, I, I want to have a hidden value to to, to a kind of merge these two questions, first name and last name. Instead of having the two, uh, two questions differently, first name, then last name, I want to have, I want to join the two, two responses together. So I'll use a hidden value to do that, right? Uh, I'll use a hidden value to say, okay, uh, this should be a hidden value, and I'll call it, uh, the ID should be, I'll call it, okay, full name. I want to call it full name. name okay I'll use the concat concatenate if you are if you are very conversant with um, uh, what do you call it uh, Excel I hope you know the concatenate um, function on in Excel where you join two different questions so I'll use the concatenate so and it is concat then I'll say okay my first name, I want you to join my first name. Hmm? Give a kind of a bit space in between them. You join it with my last name. So these two questions now are now joined, right? So if the mobile user now fills this form with the first name and last name to show me the first name and last name together okay if i see my first name is jaffa and my last name is lawa right okay so this first name and last name is being joined together but you can see in this case it's not visible for the what for the mobile user but you as the uh, app builder you can see it we have you can see this what this sign here this is called the data preview this whole interface here is called the app preview and we have the data preview here you can click on the data preview and see it hmm? so you see i have this is my hidden value now, what I have here. Uh, it has added, uh, joined Jafar and Lawa. So the full name is what is Lawa, uh, Jafar Lawa. It has joined it using the concatenate um, function. So now, but there is a way you can also make this visible to the mobile user. How do you do that? This is how I will do it. Okay, you come to the question. Your, and click on label if you want to make a, anything visible from the what do you call it hidden value you use label there are other ways too you can make them visible okay under the label i'll call it okay this is full name hmm? so i'll now say okay make my hidden value visible good so now let's go to 
app preview and see it. Okay, I will see. You can see it is not coming up. You can see it here. It is already having it here. So whatever I put here, Jaffa. Sorry. Jaffa. Uh, sorry, I think there is an issue somewhere. It's not bringing it on top. Let me fix it very well. Okay. Okay, so now I will say my full name is Jafar. You can see it is coming up as I'm typing it. Lawal. Good. So I hope you have seen that. So by doing this, by having it in the label, it is now visible for the phone user, the mobile user to see it. Otherwise, if it's not um, on label or other ways you can make it visible, the uh, uh, phone user might not be able, he will, will not be able to see it. Good. Okay. The next thing, let's have um, this date of birth now. Let's see how we can calculate the age right this is now in date of birth so we want to see the age of the respondent have haven't gotten his date of birth you don't need to ask him um how many age how many years in uh, how old are you now instead we just use some functions to uh calculate the age so now i'll still use what hidden value to do that okay and this is how you go about it. Um, hidden value, I want to calculate the age. Usually, while calculating age, you know, basically, how do we do it? It is the, it is the what? The previous, you deduct the, what do you call it? The previous year from the current year. Maybe if somebody said his date of birth is, um, uh, maybe 15 September 1980. So you, if you want to get his age, what do you do? You deduct 1980 from what? From 20, we are in 2021, right? You deduct 1980 from 2021. It will give you his age bar. So, but while using Comcare, everything in, um, in Comcare now is in this, right? The age calculation now is in this. So instead of having it from um, by saying okay the previous year deducted from the the current year you get it instead of doing that we use the what do you call it the days calculation by using come here it is okay we say this is going to be today right minus what the date of birth you know already we have our date of birth here so you just drag and drop drag it and drop it here sorry let me try to make it visible for you to see you drag the date of birth and drop it hmm? it is today that is today's date you deduct it from what? From the date of birth. But by doing this, by doing this, um, by doing it like this, you you have to convert it to what? Jaffa. Yeah. Can you do you have to remove the, the other date? The date in front of the bracket. You said before the one you drag and drop. Huh? 
formula. I'm just looking at the formula. Okay. You have to maintain the bit in front of the back end before the one you drag and drop. Yes. This date, right? Today, my last date. Exactly. Exactly. You are telling it the question type you are dropping here is date. That is what you are telling the system. It is date. Right? Okay. Yeah. So now we have to do some conversion since I told you it is counting in days now. Right? So in that case, we have to do some conversions to make it count in what? To, to make to make it count in uh what do you call it? In in the years instead of days. So by and to do that, we divide you know what we get here. Okay, we said okay, divide what we have here by 365.25 right again it is still going to give us our age in decimal which we don't want to have our age in what in decimal so what we we'll do is we still tell it to maintain our age in what in a whole number so we make this as an integer. We tell it to make it as integer. So we are done. Are we all, the, all on the same page? So in this case, whatever you enter here under this, okay, let me call this DOB meaning date of birth, right? So I'll save it. So in this case, the system will calculate my date of birth once I entered a value for, it will calculate the age once I, sorry, let me make this, call this age, instead, I'll call this age. So the system will calculate the age instead of what? The instead of just having the date of birth only. So, and how do we do that? Okay, let's just run something and see. You, I hope you can see the syntax very well now. Can you see the syntax very well now? Yes. Okay. Okay. If you are used to going to the uh, common logics and calculation, all the syntax are, syntax are ready, uh, are made available for you there. So you don't have to dissolve yourself maybe by uh, having the, jotting down the syntax. So now, let's fill this page and see what we have. Uh, okay, I will say, okay, my first name is Dafa. My last name is Owen. And uh, date of birth. Okay. Let's pick it from maybe 1996 something. Huh? My phone number. And this is mail. Yes. Okay, let's have a view of this page. Okay. So now, this is my age now. You can see it. It is saying it is 25.957, whatever, whatever. But I want to display it in integer instead. Instead of whole number. Right? Like I said earlier. So let me just do that by having a display for it. I want the mobile user to see it now. Uh, 
So how do we do that if you want it to be visible? Huh? I showed you earlier. I want somebody to answer that. How do we do that by making it visible? We go on label. Huh? We go on label. We go on label. Good. Okay, let me just allow somebody in. So to make this visible, what do we do? We go on level. And call this what? Each what is this? Uh, I'm coming. Okay, no problem. I'll still have it. It's not taking the position. So when you have it on label, it will definitely display your age. So let's not be disturbing ourselves by going to the preview. I'll still have to show you uh, how you can deploy the app on the phone and run it on the phone. So now, as I said, um, just yeah. Since the formula says today, is it taking today in literal sense? What happens if uh, the data is collected over a week's time? Does it mean for some people the age will be calculated as of Monday, others as of Tuesday, and others as of Friday? Okay, we'll come to that now. Okay. Uh, so let's go back to the formula for the date. You know, as I said earlier, we want to see the date now in terms of the age because we have um, calculated it in 360 so it will give us in year so if you want to have the date now instead of year but in weeks uh, sorry in months we want to show the date in months you know when you are dealing with infants newborn some uh, sometimes the age is calculated in in what do you call it in months or weeks so instead of this 365 you divide it by what you divide it by 30.4 and mind you you can see what i use there here div when you want to do a division in comcare you use this right it is maybe when you want to divide three divide by uh, four or four divide by two right you type three, then div, or four, then div, then two. That is how we do the division in come here. Are you getting my point? So when you want to have your date of birth in months, you do this, you divide by 30.4. But when you, when, you ha when you want to have the ages in weeks, uh, you divide by what? You divide by seven. Are we all together? Huh? Yes, we are. Okay, good. So let's go ahead. Um, and another thing you can do with, you can do so many things with um, a hidden value. You can have maybe uh, conditions for hidden value. Uh, you can have uh, something, if you, ha if you want to state like conditions for a particular variable okay let's see this question on uh, let me add a question here do you feel sick uh okay let me see number of children uh integer now Uh, 
Okay, I'll call this, okay, number of children. All right? Okay, I want it here in this page. After this question, I'll drag it and drop it here. So I'm now trying to ask the respondent uh, his or her number of children. So I want to state a condition again for, for com care. I want to say, okay, this question and do you feel sick and number of children Let me state a condition for it. Okay, let me say if. This is a kind of if condition. Are you getting my point? I have an, a hidden value. Okay, I'll tell it. If, if this respondent said, she's feeling, let me bring this question here, sorry. If the respondent said she's, If the, if the respondent says she's feeling sick, sorry. This is how I want the condition to be. If the respondent has maybe, sorry, my system is a bit fumbling is hooking <laughs> uh, I'm having is a little issue with my system sorry I'm trying to fix something here okay good so if the respondent has maybe more than four children, and again, she's for the question on, are you feeling sick? If the response for this question, are you feeling sick? Huh? Is yes. If the response for this is yes. Okay. Let's see. That means this respondent is having is in danger right otherwise let's say the respondent is okay you can have it in So did you see this condition now i'm telling the system if if this the response for this question uh, if this respondent has four children and she's feeling sick then she's in danger if otherwise the respondent is okay so i'll save this question so i'm just trying to show you how you can have conditions for a particular what do you call it question uh, let's label this question as condition. I want to call it condition. Right? So, and I still want to display this in for the phone user to see. Hmm? I'll say this is patient's condition. I'll say, okay, drop this here. I want to see the uh, patient's condition. With this, as I said earlier, with this even, uh, hidden value is very wide. What's our time? What says our time now? Wow, it's 1225. 
it's very wide, but we'll, maybe we'll be taking the classes bit by bit with hidden value. It is with hidden value we do so many things while creating our form. Most of the conditions, most of the linking, the case management, we do it with hidden value. So do you have a question um, regarding this? Any question from anybody? Hello? Hello? Um, hi, Jaffa. Okay, any question? Uh, yes. Okay. If I wanted to put up a condition to say, if pregnant and maybe above a certain age. Good. Um, like, you know how sometimes health service would yes. be wanting to go to something. So if the woman is pregnant and maybe she's above 40, uh, please recommend for further checkup or something like that. How would you go about doing that? Yes, good. So let me come back to this page. Why I have the pregnant? Um, are you pregnant and age? Right. You add. You add a hidden value. For it, and your condition says if. If the patient is what is pregnant, right? Pregnant. Mm -hmm. I'm coming. If the if pregnant, if she's pregnant, right? Did you see this? And what? Yes. And above forty-five. Above a certain age, whichever age you can pick. Okay. Uh, is it above 40? Okay. Above 40, yeah. Above 40. Yes. And age here. Mm -hmm. And age is greater than uh, 40. So what is the condition? Recommend for further checkup. Oh, I don't know anything. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see checkup. Right? Yeah. Yes. You categorize that person as. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Checkup. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, even things like that. High risk. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's say high risk. Right. Yeah. Let's make it high risk. High high risk. If otherwise, what? If otherwise, what condition? Let's say low risk. So that's it. This is how you have this condition. So you can see if the respondent is pregnant, if pregnant is yes, and age is above what, 40, then this um, uh, particular patient is on high risk. But if otherwise, low risk. So did you see the condition? Are you okay? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So you can equally display the the what do you call it? The output if you want to see it. So any question again? Hi Jaffa. Yeah. Um maybe something else from this. Uh that does come to the uh, the cascading questions. The what? Cascading questions. Cascading. What do you mean by cascading? Um, assuming you have a question, let's say you have to select um, an example. Is let's say here in Zambia we have provinces, districts. Yes. So in the assuming there are um, there are ten. 
provinces and um, maybe 200 uh, districts, but um, each province has got um, a category of um, districts. Then you want, if you select, let's say, uh, province one, then for district, it only shows um, those districts that are um, in province one. Okay. But now in one, um, in just, let's say, two variables. Yeah, if I get your question very well, maybe we have something like this checkbox. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, it's, it's, it's some kind of checkbox. Uh, no, um, it's not really checkbox, but uh, um, the, the multiple choice. But some choices are not coming uh, depending on uh, the selection. Like they, uh, they only appear depending on the selection that you do. Because uh, this is done in, in Cobalt Toolbox, so I don't know if um, this is also available. In, okay, if, in if those options only appear based on your selection, right? Yes, yes. Uh, yes, I think that was, that was what we did earlier, right? When we have question for, we validated question for gender and said, um, it's, it will only show up, are you pregnant, when the selection here is gender? Are you not talking? Um, not really like that. Um, let's say, I can give an example of, um, let's say you have level of education there. Mm -hmm. Then, um, well, not level of education, but um, the, um, the university where someone is. Then the next question, maybe it's, um which uh, which field are you in let's say humanities the social science yeah then there's also natural science <laughs> then um if, if you select natural science then the next question will add other options but only show you the options for for natural science but it's just one question yes so I, the choices, yeah i understand i understand that is possible with compare that is very possible to come here. When we go to the advanced section of um, uh, hidden question, you will see that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So but but I, will, I will suggest maybe if you are all in the group, you get it. Let's get a particular, let's get a questionnaire that will be uh, will create. You get it? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Let, let's oh, just, Jaffa. somebody should get us. I'm coming, please. So uh, somebody should get us one questionnaire and share it on the group. So for the next lesson, we just use that questionnaire for our example. Right? Yeah, you wanted to say something? I'm listening. I was actually adding to the same question that he was asking. Okay. To say when you are conducting a, a survey, so you've got some data collectors that will be in uh, Abuja. What other province? What other place do you have in Nigeria than Abuja? <laughs> <laughs> we have Mina, we have Lagos, Ibadan. Uh -huh, Lagos. So let's say me, I'm in Lagos, yeah. and you are collecting data in Abuja. Yeah. So what he doesn't want is that the moment I select Abuja, yes. I should not see any towns of Lagos. Good, good. I should only see only towns that apply to the Abuja that I've selected. Equally the same, the moment you select that you're in Lagos, good. he wants only the provinces or the places, the towns in Lagos to show to you. Good. That is, that is using the lookup or either... The what do you call it? Display condition that is very very possible. I just did one so one one survey on that. I think I have it here for AYGF and also which organization where if you select a particular state, it is only the information for that state that will come up. You get it? Okay. Yeah, that yeah. is very possible. We'll, we'll get to that. So any more question? So I would suggest you, um, somebody should get us a questionnaire and share it in the group. So we'll use that maybe in the next class. I think that was, that's what we'll be using. And also by doing that, I'll be adding, Comcare is really wide. Um, but while we are using that um, questionnaire, we'll be adding a particular topic to it. 
right? Oh, um, Hello? yeah. Hello? So if we continue, Hello? 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 yeah. Well, um, assuming you have two forms, and um, maybe you want if if, if someone finishes um, answering the form one, yeah, that's when the form two would appear. Um, so how do you do that? Yes, that is case management. We get to do that. Oh, okay, cool. Yes, that is case management. Hello, Gavar. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how are you? I'm fine. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm already ready from South Sudan. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much for impressive uh, session yeah. uh, today. Yeah. yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Though I I I joined late. Uh, because I didn't, I was not there at the beginning okay. when you started with the introduction. Okay. So I I request. Uh, if you really can provide the, the the audio, I mean the record for today's session, so that uh, we we can start from there okay. before we join the the next session. Yes. Okay. Already, I have something like this already on my YouTube page for the first class, and also I will still upload this to my YouTube page and share the page on the the link on the group WhatsApp group. So so please do make sure you are added to the whatsapp group i am there you are there already right okay so the link will be shared okay i think uh, noah will yeah, do that is 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 noah with us okay okay continue with your question i'm listening yeah I, I, and then how about the the comp here now you said, so why should we get okay um that is another class for another day but let me quickly show you how you can deploy your application to your phone is that is that what you are talking about yes okay um let me look at my time oh it's okay for the application you are, we have created now you can equally deploy it you can equally deploy it to your phone right you go to play store and download come here from there are you with me oh, yes yes I'm uh -huh. after which you come back to your um project click on my repeat class here what i've clicked on Okay. So this is where you make a new version. But before you do that, you are supposed to add users, your mobile users. Are you getting my point? You add users and uh, go ahead to publish the um, application. And going about adding users, you can just come to users here. You get it. You see, you can add uh, mobile users. You can equally add web, uh, add web users. And you can equally do it from here. If you click on main, make a new version, it will ask you to, what do you call it, to create uh, users. But already for this application, I've created user. Otherwise, what, after clicking on make a new version, it will definitely, if you are, uh, what do you call it, creating the application for the first time without adding users, it will definitely um, request you to add users. So, but let me show you, I've added user, on this app for, for the previous video that is why it's not coming up okay let me just show you how you can add users come to this place okay do you get it click on the user yeah so you create a mobile worker Click on create the mobile worker. Now you give it a username. As usual, you know, your survey app, you have a username and password for it, right? Okay, let me see the username for this app is class four. Right? And the phone number, uh, the password is class, let me type it very well, class, Class four also. 
then treats. Mm -hmm. So I have added a user with the name class4 for this app. Right? So I'll go back to the application. Mm -hmm. So, and you click on make a new version, which I've done that already. Huh? So, making test, I will, it is important, I will show you the, the meaning of this, uh, what do you call it, uh, in test and also latest. If I create, if I create it as in test, that means if you have your application already on your phone, there is a provision for you to just um, click a particular um, portion of the app and update from there. But if you don't make it an in-test, they will have to follow a kind of procedure to get the application downloaded to their phone. So I'll make mine in-test and you come to publish. Click on publish. Okay. There are three ways you publish your application on the phone. The first one is by using the code. You can see the code here. 3Q4RBN4. That is the code you share with the mobile user. If it, uh, you get it. If you are downloading computer for the first time, it will demand for the code. So you just input the code and the app will be downloaded. Or you scan a barcode. It will create a barcode for you. There is a provision for you to scan from the phone, from the Comcare app on your phone with the barcode. All right? You scan it with the barcode. Otherwise, the other aspect is offline. Uh, you download the CCZ file. The Comcare CCZ file. Is a zip file of Comcare. So you download it and have it on your phone. Then you, the mobile user now, maybe in a situation whereby there is no internet service in a location and you have an app you want to share with your mobile user, maybe you went for supervision. So you download the app. I'll go ahead and download it. This form I've created now, that is what I'm trying to download. Uh, let me just allow this person in. Oh. Is lit. So now you can see here the fo the form is downloaded. So there is a provision in the phone where you upload upload the phone and automatically you will get the latest version of the app I've created. Right? Are you all okay with this? I had wanted this to be a different class where I will I will be showing you from the phone. I have an app where I can view my phone directly. If I connect it to the system, I can be following the steps one after the other show you how you download the app in the phone using the three methods but um because of the question from this person so that was why we just quickly brushed over how to deploy your app on the phone oh so, so these are the basically three ways you de deploy your app on on the phone are you okay do you have a question pertaining to this I think I'm okay now. Thank you so much. Okay. But um, by, uh, maybe the next video will, will follow the steps one after the other. I will connect my phone to the system and mirror it for you to see the steps. Okay. Any question? Let me go to my go back to the form. Any question? Okay, I think we are okay. If you have any question, you can equally drop it in the WhatsApp platform or in the comment section of my YouTube channel. So, thank you very much for listening and do have a nice day. All right, thank you. Have a nice day too. Okay, bye bye. Thank you. Yeah, bye bye. Thank you. Good day too. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Good day, thank you. Uh -huh, bye bye. Thank you, Java. Mm -hmm, bye bye. <laughs> so, bye bye. Somebody just came late. Dabogi Villa, you are elites.
Yeah, thank you. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. Thank you.